Well, good afternoon to everyone, and I want to welcome you to the Finance of America Wholesale Renovember Renovation Made Simple with the Finance of America Renovation Project Manager. My name is Ginger Bell, and I'll be guiding you through the webinar today. And I have William Brown, who's the National Renovation Sales Manager with us. So hello, William. Hi, everybody. Thanks, Ginger. Okay, so while you are getting logged in, I'm going to go through a couple of housekeeping items. First of all, you'll be able to see my screen, and uh, I'll be moving the slides today. We do have some handouts for you. I'm going to tell you how to get them in a second. Um, you can listen a couple of different ways on the webinar. You can either call in on your phone, or you can listen on your computer. If you are dialing in on your phone, and you happen to be driving or you know, eating lunch or whatever, I am recording this and I will send out a copy of the recording along with all the handout material in an email tomorrow. So um, just to let you know that. If you do have questions that come up today, and we do get a lot of questions on our renovation uh, webinars, you can ask those questions two different ways. You can either type in the Q&A box that is located on your Zoom panel, or you can type in the chat box. So both of those will get the questions to me and then I will key those up to William as we get those. And uh, let's go ahead and do a quick little sound check, make sure that you all can hear us and you know how to ask questions. And if you can just type in what part of the country you're calling in from. I am back in Portland, Oregon today. And it looks like it is blue skies out there, which is very, very nice. And uh, not too bad a weather across the country, which is good. Hopefully we have good weather for next year. Uh, next year, next week. <laughs> I'm already into next year uh, because I know we're coming into Thanksgiving, which is always nice because it's a nice long weekend. Okay, so I know you can hear me and uh, hello to everyone. Thanks for chiming in. If you have questions, go ahead and put them there. Uh, and then quickly, we have another renovation webinar that's coming up next week on Monday. So to get you started off, with a wonderful week for Thanksgiving week, we are going to do a renovation home loan training for realtors. So we're going to be sharing information uh, that you can use with realtors or even if you want to do consumer uh, training and workshops. So that's what we'll be doing next Monday. If you'd like to register for that, you can go to www.famuevents.com and I'll send up a follow link as well. Hey, we do have, yep. I just want to tell these guys, I was in, um, in Eugene, Oregon last week, and I did a realtor CE course for like 39 realtors, and yeah. three people in the room had, had done 203k loans, and nobody had heard of HomeStyle. Nice. So guys, you know, you can get out there, and you've got something to talk to your realtors about. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those things, and we'll talk about this next week on the webinar too, William, is finding ways to be able to get into um, realtors. And it's a great time of the year to do that and being able to provide a resource. And that's really part of the tools that we use. And we'll talk about it on Monday also is really leveraging that. One of the things we're leading off though today is really being able to get into these renovation loans without taking a lot of time from you. And I think that's um, one of the things we'll talk about is how to do that. So you can um, access, you can get, so today's handouts, we've got a 203K guide and we've got the slide deck. And so you can pick those up in the chat box or I'm gonna send up a follow-up email tomorrow. And, uh, and with that, I'll also send a link to the recording because I'm recording this webinar and I'll send you a registration. So those things I'll send to you as a follow-up. So let's go ahead and get started. As I said, my name is Ginger Bell. I'm an education specialist in the industry. I have with me William Brown, who's the National Renovation Sales Manager and has been involved um, for uh, quite some time. And we've got Kenny asking, is this a new webinar or a rerun of the previous two webinars? So this is a combination webinar, Kenny. So if you've been on a 203K webinar before, our renovation webinar. Um, we get through, you know, the highlights of this one. And so each one's a little bit different that we do. Sometimes we go through the maximum mortgage worksheet. Sometimes we go through how to have a conversation. So each one is a little bit different. And if you um, have particulars you're looking for, by all means, let us know, because we always like to make sure that we're hitting that. But to the point of um, what you're saying, William, is doing a presentation for a group of almost 40 realtors uh, last week in Eugene, Oregon, and finding out the majority of them hadn't even heard about HomeStyle. And so sometimes you think you're doing a repeat of something, but you find out that there's a lot of people that don't know the particulars. 
And especially for realtors, because realtors often don't um, either know about rental loans, they don't want to do rental loans. And so the question is, and this is, you know, really an open-ended question, is why don't more people sell renovation products? And so I know, William, you have an idea as far as what that is, right? Yeah, I do. I think, um, A, it's, A, it's strange and unfamiliar. Um, and B, it's sort of complicated and also unfamiliar. And C, they don't know anybody that's been successful doing it. <laughs> so. And that's a lot of it, too. It's just a matter of, um, it, you know, it's one of those things. It's like maybe they're elaborating a lot. It's like, oh, my gosh, it took so much time. Or, oh, my gosh, we couldn't get it done. And, and really, it's maybe just, you know, one realtor in an office of 100 that may have that. And they're all like, oh, I don't want to do that. So it's really dispelling those myths. And a lot of it is myths. And, I, and you have a story that you shared with me um, last year um, that, you know, talks about uh, really being able to have uh, a team on board and, and being able to tackle this. And it and relates to a fish story, William, which I love because, you know, we do a lot of fishing in the Pacific Northwest. So can you share that story with our listeners here? Sure. So we fish in the Great Lakes, too. This is actually up on the kind of the tidewaters of Lake Superior. Um, I was out camping college. So it was a college program. It was our third, you know, like our four, four week adventure to teach us some social skills and to overcome some difficulties. And the last 12 days, we had to canoe and portage from a point in northeastern Canada back to our ride home. So we had like 10 days to get there. And after about halfway through, one of the guys just had, he just had a crappy attitude. He didn't like anything we were doing, he didn't like the way we were going, he thought we were lost. He was constantly freaking out and like, think about that as far as renovation loans, right? People don't like them. They're freaking out. They have bad experiences, all this stuff. So he gets in the boat one night, he's sulking and he's out fishing. And all of a sudden we hear this guy screaming for help. And we look on this canoe is tipped up in the water. Like the bow is six feet off the water and he's headed out to the river, like by his fishing line. So we like laughed for a minute and then we thought we better go get him. So we went out there and he had snagged a pike that was all of, 45 inches long and he just barely hooked him on the gill <laughs> and that fish was not interested in being dinner right. so it took like four of us to get him into the canoe you know and we ate him for dinner and for breakfast and for lunch it was a huge fish and so you know when you get enough people behind you he would have been lost by himself right he would have been gone if he'd have been out there by himself he'd either let go of the pole or go for the ride and i think it's the same with renovation loans right and so when you get this deal we have a process in place that makes that fish manageable. We will help you get it in the boat and we will help you prepare it for dinner. Right. So that's kind of the story here, what we're trying to get to with our renovation loans. Exactly. And that's the whole idea is to be able to know that you do have help and support when you do get something big on. And the main thing is to, first of all, know you have that support and also let your, your team know with your real estate partners, or even if you're getting into, you know, talking to contractors or talking to, um, you know, roofers or remodelers. I mean, there's a whole opportunity for you to build an entire team around marketing a product like this. But the first thing you have to know is what are some of the challenges and being able to explain through those challenges, right? Right. So the first thing you got to know, like you guys have to read the guidelines. Okay. It's because they're different. And, and you're the originator. So you have to be, you have to know the products well enough to have a, a coherent conversation with the consumer or a real, a consumer who may know nothing about the product or a realtor who may be aggressively against the product. So you got to know what you can do and what you can't do, which fits in what's bucket. And once you get that nailed down, then you have to master the maximum mortgage worksheet for each product. Cause that's the only way you can keep it a financial transaction and see where the numbers are. So I tell people all the time, don't send me your pros scenario about the qualifications of your buyer and how good of a credit they got and how much money they want to spend. Just send me your worksheet because then we know if we have a deal. Right. And, and so you got to do that. And then the other part is managing the whole thing. And that's where we bring our strength to, to bear is that we manage all the renovation stuff. So basically your day job is the same. You have to know the product particulars. You have to be able to have that conversation you have to be able to drill down on the financial aspect, which is our job as originators. We're just finances, finance people. We don't care. 
I try, try not to care about what that what kind of carpet or flooring or anything or the details of the project because that's immaterial to a financial transaction. Right. Right. And then once you get that, we manage the project and we walk with you and the borrowers all the way to closing and then we manage them in house for the escrow part. So that's really the challenges. Those are the biggest challenges that I've seen in 15 years. And I think we've provided solutions for all of those. Although the first one leans on you guys, cause you gotta get the product guidelines and get at least familiar with what you can do, what you can't do. And it's not a matter of having to know all of the guidelines, but you have to know, you know, a few things. And we're going to cover some of those today too, as far as the highlights yeah, on what highlights. can and cannot be done because there are uh, different products. So one of the advantages too of being able to have a loan done with Finance of America is really understanding that you have the team in place that understands renovation loans, right? That's true. Because most lenders, they use their regular DE for 203K loans. And, and what happens when you send a 203K to a DE or a home style to a regular underwriter is that they break out in hives. <laughs> <laughs> right. And they never, they never want to pick up your file because they don't know, understand where the risk is and they know they're responsible for making a decision on the file. So you need a shop that has a dedicated renovation underwriter who understands the risk and knows how to look at the file. Or I guarantee you, they're going to condition you for some stuff that doesn't even exist because they don't know what to ask for. And again, another opportunity for you when you're talking to your realtor partners to let them know, I have a team in place. Yep. And you do. With Finance of America Wholesale, you have a team in place. Um, and so understanding what that is. So we have a question. I'll let you handle it right now. It's what okay. does DE stand for? It stands for Direct Endorsed Underwriters. So those are the people who are, are, they have a registered number with FHA and they can underwrite FHA files. Okay. And so, and, and therefore they, their files can be tracked and audited connected back to them. That's what a DE underwriter is. And it's not just 203K. 203K happens to be an FHA product. And so that's right. why um, William's referencing here that most of your wholesale lenders that you send your business to that do renovation loans, um, it's a one-off and it truly is just, okay, you know, Sally does FHA loans. So Sally's doing FHA 203K and Sally may get one FHA 203K loan a year. And so now you're doing one a year, she's doing one a year, and your realtor is freaking out. Yep. And so having a team in place gives you the opportunity, even if you don't know a lot about it, you have enough, you know, you know the guidelines enough to be dangerous, right? Um, I mean. But you're sending it into someone who really knows what can and can't be done. And know those fringe areas. You know, when I first started getting into developing training based on guidelines, William, I was always amazed. It's like, okay, there's this gray area. I call them ghost guidelines mm -hmm. um, where it's not really written anywhere. But, you know, you're, you, you know, there's certain things that can and cannot be done. So having somebody who's done that before is like, oh, yeah, we got this done before and it worked this way. It's like, no problem. Good to go that you have the team in place. And right, that's right. really what FAM does is um, doing renos right. And so that's one of the things um, when Finance of America, and because FAM has been doing renovation loans for a very long time. I know, William, you've been doing them for years. And so um, it really is an opportunity to have what's the FAM exclusive, and that's the renovation project manager. So tell us a little bit about what that is. Okay, so this is, this is a common sense division of labor, right? In a renovation loan, you've got some revenue generating activities and you've got a whole lot of non-revenue generating activities, okay? And I used to originate, I originated for about seven years and I was a one-arm paper hanger trying to, trying to hit my numbers and get my deals closed because, because it's two different jobs. Right. So the sales job is, is generating and driving new business, but then the rental project manager's job is managing all of the renovation project and all the bits and pieces and stuff that you as a typical loan officer don't know, like uh, how to talk to a contractor, what they need, why you need it. What about lead based paint? What about zoning? What about liens? All this stuff that's not part of your day job. Okay. So we broke that in half and we assigned a dedicated project manager who specializes in renovation loans to manage all of that. So you guys are really just working on your, typical credit income asset HOI VOE package of conditions that's normal for an FHA or conventional loan. That makes a huge difference. It, it increases your productivity. Um, it should give you confidence to sell the product. It's like, it's all that we do in my group. That's, we do renovation and some construction loans, but that's all we do. 
So, and we're good at it. Some of us have been together for 10 years doing this um, and it actually works. But that's, that's, that's the secret sauce, if there is one, is to have a project manager who knows how to manage a project, who knows how to communicate with the borrower, how to communicate with the builder, how to do a HUD consultant, all that stuff. So this is our project, our process, right? So the project manager gets the file. You get your underwriting condition from us in about 24, maybe 48 hours because we have a dedicated underwriter. So that's what they do with two of them. Um, and after you get your conditional commitment, the project manager is assigned. They review the file. They're going to call you and the consumer. If they can get you both on the phone at the same time, they will. If not, they'll just update you with what we're telling the consumer because really the person we have to talk to is the consumer because the clock is ticking on them because they signed a contract to close by a certain date. Okay. And so they're going to collect all the reno specific conditions and you'll see them on your conditional commitment because they'll either be prefaced. They'll start off with 203K or HMSTY for home style. If you see that on a condition, we got it. Your processor does not even need to think about it. Okay. We got it. And they will manage the redisclosures. The project manager will order the appraisal. Please don't order the appraisal at the beginning because Humpty, Humpty Dumpty just fell off the wall. <laughs> right. We'll order the appraisal at the right time. We'll manage all the redisclosures. And then the project manager, who also, they, they also used to be processors, will review all the conditions, the steps that are submitted, and submit it back for um, clear to close. So we have a question, too. Um, Kenneth wants to know, as loan officers, will they have the opportunity to have direct conversations with the DE underwriters? Um, our underwriters do talk to you if you need to. Um, they're not they're not averse to talking to you. But if it's a scenario like I'm a DE underwriter, I can answer most scenarios, um, and I'm in step with the underwriter because I hired her. I hired them. Um, my ops manager has been managing ops for several years. She can answer them. So we, you know, you probably would go through your account exec, who might send it to our our scenarios email box, which we monitor. Um, yeah, you could talk to her any of the underwriters if you needed to, but most of the time, 80% of the time, you don't really need to talk to the underwriter. You just need to know the answer to your question. Right. And that's a lot of it too. And I know as loan officers, it, um, it can sometimes be challenging because you're not talking to underwriters. But right. the reality is if underwriters are talking to you, they're not getting files underwritten. So that's a lot of times why you look to someone else to be able to answer those questions. But if it gets down to it, and especially if it's a sticky thing or you're not really clear about it, um, the advantage is, is you have a project manager that's going to be there and they're going to be that front line for you to be able right. to find out those answers. Right. So it's the next best thing to be to, to the underwriter answering 25 phone calls a day, which means she wouldn't get anything underwritten. Exactly. So we are very responsive. We, we are consistent in our answers. The four of us, my office manager, myself, and my underwriters, we've been together for a long time. We think about the same things the same way. So I wouldn't tell you something and then the underwriter would come back and say, no, that's not going to happen. So let's go through the process because it seems like a good time to really understand what the process is and where everything fits in. Okay. So, so what's going to happen? The whole process starts with the sale. When you get a real deal, you know, uh, a purchase agreement or, you know, they sign their document to proceed on a refinance, then you're, you're going to, we disclose these, right? You're going to upload your 3.2 file, um, our wholesale ops group is going to disclose the loan. When the disclosures come back, it gets transferred to us. And then we underwrite it and do that. So your first thing is to do the training. It's on FAMU if you haven't done it. It's just, a, they're both short webinars. I think each one's about 35 minutes for 203K and for Homestyle. There is a test. It's totally open book. Get the guidelines, get the worksheet, find the answers. That's the way we built it. Like there's no trick questions. And then also when you click on the links on FAMU for the training, you will see all of the supporting materials for each program. They just drop down right below the training. So you can download those to your computer as well. So you're gonna do your pre-qual like normal. I always pre-qual people as if they're doing a renovation loan, even if they're not, so that I can show them how they could have a budget to shop for houses that were in their price range but needed work. Um, that opens up opportunity for borrowers. So I'm going to back you up and I'm going to talk about that because that's kind of a different mindset. A lot of times people come into the idea of doing a renovation loan as a second um, opportunity. And what you're suggesting is to be able to have a conversation when you're sitting down with borrowers initially and especially if they're shopping and you're yeah. doing a prequel 
to be able to say, have you thought about, or are you looking at, or you may find or run across houses that need some TLC. And, you know, one of the advantages of working with me as a mortgage broker is I have the opportunity to work with and have on my team access to some renovation loan products. And so you may not go this direction, but I want to be able to have a conversation with you and kind of walk you through the opportunity. So let's do that right now. Now by doing that, and I love this, William, because first of all, it's going to make you stand out because I can guarantee you there is no other loan officer, especially from a bank or a credit union that is having a a conversation about this at all. And I've talked to several people that didn't even know there was an opportunity of having a a, a loan to where they could buy a home and fix it up and it could all be wrapped in one loan. And so just having that simple conversation saying, you know, you may not go in this direction, but wouldn't you at least like to know you have that option? And it's funny that that can open dialogue for so many people because they are watching the HGTV shows and they're looking at those, you know, fix and flip and all the other shows that are out there. And it's like, Oh, you mean I could actually do something like that? And the light bulb goes on. And again, it's just creating an opportunity for you. So having that discussion and making that suggestion to do that, William, I think is huge. I think it's really powerful if people will do it. And like Ginger said, it it opens up the dialogue and it also may cause your phone to ring because everybody that you talk to is not going to do a renovation loan, guaranteed. You might get two out of 10 people. Right. But if you have the conversation 10 times, everybody's going to tell somebody about what you told them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and your phone's going to ring because they want to know what you're talking about. So yeah. it, you know, it empowers your power. It sort of seals your relationship as a preferred lender and it opens, creates opportunities for referral business. Yeah, and that's one of the things we're going to talk about on Monday, too, is ways to be able to do that and stand out. And part of that is video, which, you know, William, I'm big on that right now. Yep, yep. So then they, so they have that. They've done the prequal. They've originated the complete file. They submitted it, uploaded it to FAM. And now that's when BAM's going to take over, send out the disclosures, and the project manager is going to take over. And here's the thing, and this is why, again, you want to have a conversation with your borrowers and say, listen, I have a team, and on my team, I have a project manager who is going to be calling you. Now, this is the one time, and as you know, being a loan officer, um, as a broker, you don't have a wholesaler calling your clients. So you want to be able to let people know, number one, this is happening. And number two, that they're on your team and that you really do have a team that's going to make you seem again, so much more professional and stand out to say, listen, my, um, project manager is going to call you. They're going to schedule, they're going to answer all your questions, all those kind of things. And I'd recommend being on that call with them Mm -hmm. because the thing that's going to do is that's going to get you more familiar with the process and the questions and it gives you an opportunity based on those questions to maybe create an FAQ or a video or something like that to help you to stand out more. Correct. Okay, so then that happens. Now it's going to be processed. Credit conditions are going to be done. You're going to get a credit package because we have two different things. Obviously, we have our credit and we have our collateral. And so your credit is your borrow. Your collateral is the house. And the house is really when that appraisal is going to take over. So the credit part is done. Now you're going to go out and order the appraisal, but that appraisal is not going to be ordered until they have an idea on what kind of renovations they want done. So they're going to decide, you know, first of all, they're going to know how much they can qualify for. So, and whether they're doing a home style, whether they're doing a streamline or a full 203K, how much money they have. And they're going to go out and get bids and your project manager is going to manage that for you. So right. they get to go shopping, which, you know, if there's some women involved in this or anyone who likes to shop, that's the fun part. And, you know, it's one of those things. And again, you guys think of ways to stand out. If you have someone that's doing a renovation loan, Why not get a magazine that you mail to them that has renovation ideas or home remodeling ideas and say, okay, start dreaming. Now we're going to start planning. Um, So don't just create it as a transaction. What you need to get over is this thought of being transactional and being relationship based and being able to get involved with someone on their hopes and their dreams and what they can do changes that from a transaction to a relationship. So think Mm -hmm. about those kind of things. So the appraisal is going to get ordered and then that appraiser is going to go out and they're going to have those bids with them, right? Yes, it is an as completed or subject to value report. 
and that appraiser is going to take those bids and he's going or he or she is going to include those in the value. So it's going to be an after improved value that you're going to see. Um, and that's what the qualifications are going to happen. And we're not going to go through the whole worksheet. We have other webinars we'll do that on. Um, but that part is all processed. And then we obviously have pre-disclosures and then we get to submit the file for closing and then the closing happens. And then that's when everybody gets paid when the closing happens. And this is the one thing that realtors always want to know about. When do I get paid? They get paid when the transaction closes, not when the work is done. And so that's important for you to be able to have that conversation with the realtors and let them know that they're going to get paid. Then the whole project begins, right? And that's really what this process is too, because that's when the borrower is going to move into the property um, or within 30 days anyway from closing um, to be able to do that. And then the whole renovation process begins. So talk to us a little bit about that, William, as far as the whole end-to-end -end customer care. Okay, so at the front end, you have you guys at the front end. We're your back office, right? But we it's a FAM project manager who's talking to you and the borrower. Um, and then once your loan moves to closing, the closer's in our group. So we close the loan, and then we basically do a warm handoff to one of our escrow administrators who will be the buyer's person until the renovation is complete. Because we manage that in-house. Um, we do use a third-party company for some of the inspections on HomeStyle, but we manage all the docs, we do all the funds management, all the distributions, contractor payments, dispute resolution, all that stuff happens in-house, okay? So, so your borrower is basically with the same company that you brought, her, you brought them to at the beginning. And then once the renovations are complete, we will notify you. That's a perfect time to follow up with them if you haven't been in touch with them for a few months and find out how they're doing, do they like their house, do they have some pictures, they post it to social media, you know, how the process go, and you can push any feedback that you, they give you back to me. I, I'd love to hear from customers if it worked, if it didn't work, if they liked it or not, because these are our people and we're trying to provide the best experience for everybody. So that's the end-to-end -end customer care. So that's what you're selling. Like we're not, we are gonna sell their loan, but we're not gonna sell it, they're not changing servicers until the renovations are completed. Okay, so it's not like you closed today on Tuesday and you get your, your, your goodbye and your welcome letter next week. Um, they're going to be with us until the renovations are completed, and then it probably will be sold. So that's right. the process. And so one of the things, too, is that common sense approach, um, having access to that project manager, having um, the accessibility to have those questions answered, and providing that end-to-end -end customer care. So let's talk about overlays. And we have uh, a couple of questions I'm going to ask you in a minute, but I do want to have, this is, and again, we're not getting into all the details um, on this particular webinar because there's so many to cover between the two, but here's the standard as far as what's required. Right. And, and so we don't actually have a whole lot of overlays because we're basically, my, my job at the end of the day is to make sure that I can insure the loan if it's an FHA loan and I can deliver it to Fannie Mae if it's a home style loan. So if, if I can, I'm gonna close it. And I, I honestly tell you, if I tell you that I can't insure it, or I can't, it's not deliverable to Fannie Mae, I don't care what anybody else tells you, um, there, there, there may be blowback when it gets audited, okay? Because we're gonna close it if we can close it. We'll go to 620 on a minimum FICO, we go to 51% DTI, and you look in our guideline, you'll see there are some compensating conditions which are all around extra cash, because what happens in a renovation loan is the person spends more money than you lend to them. So if I bump them up to 54.9 and their car breaks down or their kid gets sick or their pet gets sick or something happens, then their mortgage is at risk because that's their income, right? So we will go to 51% and then we pretty much use common sense underwriting. If there's an LOX, like somebody asked me today, this scenario came in today. The wife owns a house in this town. She's going to sell it. Um, her new husband owns a town, house in this town, but he's renting it. He doesn't live there right now, but he, they want to move in together because it's a bigger house. So can he do a renovation loan on his house, even though he's not living there? Common sense. Of course he can. It's his house. It'll be a refinance, right? But he's not living there. So we'll need a letter of explanation. And of course, he's going to sign his owner, his affidavit of ownership, I mean, of occupancy. So, so it's not that complicated, right? Um, so it's pretty much common sense. We're going to follow the guideline. We, we're familiar with them. Like I said, we've been in this space for a long time. 
we know what's deliverable. We know what I can ensure. Right. And that's the key. So there are a few lenders that offer them. And, you know, I, I have a question. I don't know if you have the answer. I know we've, Kenneth is asking, Kenneth, you have a lot of questions. I love this. Um, that we had in a previous webinar, he said some time ago that there are so many XYZ number of homes or properties that are so many years old or in dire need of TLC. And I know we had some numbers on that as far as how many there are. Do you know offhand? I think the average age of a home today across the country is over 20. Is that right? Yeah, it's actually closer to 52, I think. Oh my gosh, seriously? The average, if you average them all, like there's a lot of old houses on the East Coast and down South, and then, but there hasn't been a lot of new construction since the collapse. Right. right? So, you know, so we're 10 years behind, which impacts the averages. But yeah, it's between 42 and 52 years is the average age. Right. So if you look at those, then there's a huge opportunity to be able to get in those average age, 52 years. So hopefully, Kenneth, that gives you some information. And we'll see about pulling some information in. I, I don't know if I'll get it done in time for Monday, but we'll definitely work on that. Um, the other thing is, this is a great opportunity for refinance. And you can do a refinance and a renovation together. So what does that look like? Right. So people call you because they, they want to refi their house and they want to do a cash out. You should ask them, what's the cash for, <laughs> right? Um, nine, a lot of times, seven out of 10 times, it's to fix up something in the house. They don't know they have a renovation on option. They think they have to do a cash out refi or a HELOC, all right? So what we know is that a lot of people pay for their renovations on their credit cards. So if you have an existing database of customers, we have a, a, a refi and renovate campaign already built. It's available in FAMU. You can put your logo on it, you can then email it, or you can social media post it to, to let consumers be, become aware of the fact that there's financing potentially available for them to renovate their house, right? And this is just some stats that came out. How This is from a house survey that came out, I think, last year. Um, and you'll see that millennials are paying with their credit card, 41%, versus the boomers, who are less. Boomers usually have more resources, right? And they're also a little more savvy. They've been living in the house for a while. Um, maybe they can manage the HELOC. Maybe they can manage the cash out and just manage the cash. But, you know, there's a huge opportunity of people who don't know that they don't have to use their cash or their credit to fix up their house. So if you I, start gripping a refi and renovate campaign, your phone will ring. People want to know, how does this work? Yep. So we have access to training materials that are available, training and marketing materials. So there are some excellent flyers that are available in FAMU that you can personalize and use for your own marketing. And then you also can attend training there. We have a lot of training that's available in there. So if you're looking for training on how to complete the maximum work worksheet or additional things as far as getting into the details, and if you don't like reading guidelines, then I'd recommend to go to FAMU. If you don't have a login, you have to talk to your FAM account executive. Don't send me an email contact your FAM account executive and they can get you a login and then you can take all the training that you want there. We have training on, on VA, on FHA, on all the different products that are available with FAM. And so you can also access all the materials there as well. So how do you get started? Contact your account exec, register at FAMU. Please do the training. It'll give you a really good idea of, of our philosophy and, and how the program works. It'll answer a lot of questions for you and then use the flyers to promote the products. And I do have an answer to the question because I have an extra monitor. So average age of the houses are 37 years old across the country, but the median age on the East coast is 57 to 58 years, which gotcha. is where I got 42 years. So there you go. But that's how you get started. You got You can't learn renovation loans if you don't handle the products. And so the first couple may make you nervous. You may feel like you're getting dragged out to see, um, but we will come and rescue you. <laughs> I love that. Got the big fish on. Yeah, uh, get a call. When you get one, don't panic. We will, we will help you. And it will help you grow your business because you get, you know, when you call, like I used to be a loan officer, and by the time I got people to the table with, with no back office support for renovation loans, um, they were like, what? And when I asked them if anybody in their family or friends would be interested in talking about a renovation loan, they say like, uh, no, no, not really. <laughs> right. But if you come up after the house is done and they're in their new kitchen in the morning, they're having a nice cup of coffee, looking out over their deck. They like will open their phone book and tell you 
about their mother, their friend, their neighbor, somebody at work, because all their people in their circle are amazed that they got their house done. So it's a whole different experience, you know, and your realtor should be stepping up to, to present it to more prospects as well, because people are happy when they get their dream home inside their mortgage. So absolutely. So if we, I think we've been answering questions as we go along. If you do have additional questions, then please let us know. Um, so we do have a question. Can we get contractor packets and contractors approved prior to the project? So all the contractor information is on FAMU, but we don't approve them if they're not connected to a project because the approval process isn't very long, but I pay for it. And so I don't want to, I don't want to just approve contractors because I don't know who they are. Right, so this brings up my other soapbox, which is your borrower needs to pick the contractor. Uh, you don't have time, I don't think, to go to court if the contractor you refer to your borrower doesn't actually work out and the borrower sues them and takes them to court and the judge asks the borrower where the contractor came from and they came from the loan officer, odds are likely, at least I've seen this, that you may be subpoenaed to appear in court to explain your relationship with that contractor to the judge. So. Uh, and and if, if we as experts recommend the contractor, the borrower stops thinking about it, but they need to think about it because this person's going to be in their house for three, six, nine months. And if they don't vet them individually, it doesn't usually end well. Exactly. And we don't have training for training material for contractors. Um, and it's easy. It's easy. Give me a bid, show up and do the work. We pay you. You're done. <laughs> It's easy. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they don't really need to know anything. It's like, you know, you need to know, and and we're going to help you as far as what are some of the repairs that can be done and which yeah. program it falls into. Right. And so, you know, maybe what we'll do next month, um, William, is a comparison side by side of the 203K, the um, limited, and then the standard, and then the home style as far as repairs. That'd be good. And I can pull some case studies from loans we've done. Yeah, so we haven't done that, um, so we can do that. And then um, question, Percy wants to know, are there two trainings required to get certified, one for HomeStyle and one for FHA 203K? Yes, there are, because they're different programs, and they have different requirements. Yeah, so Robert has a comment, contractors do, li do not like the way the bids are required. Um, so I can't really help them, because it's a HUD and a Fannie Mae requirement that the bids are broken down in material and labor. But what I tell the contractors is I don't really care about your profit margin. I, we don't care as a lender. I have to have a bid in the file that is, has, shows your work broken down in material and labor because HUD and Fannie Mae feels like that gives the consumer a better opportunity to compare contractors. Okay, if the, the, the lump sum bid doesn't have enough detail in it, if the project goes off the rails. So there's not really any flex. And if the guys don't wanna do their bid material and labor, I can't insure it and I can't deliver it to Fannie Mae. Right. So another question, does FAM offer conventional mortgage renovation loans or all of them FHA? That would be Fannie Mae Home Style, which is a conventional conforming high balance renovation loan amount. And the nice thing too, so, so here's the thing based on the questions, and I love your questions, guys, is um, I think next month we'll do a comparison and, and why don't we just get that scheduled? Um, sure. William, we were just talking about what to do in December. So it's like, um, you know, which <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll do the Christmas. Which, which list are you on? Which rental list are you on? Right. You know, what What's can you do? Stocking? You know, what's in your stocking? Yeah, that kind of thing. So, um, but do a comparison as far as the different renovation loans that can be done, um, because I think that would be beneficial for everyone to be able to have an idea on that too. Yeah, I will start working on slides for that because there's, there's some nuances. So right. it's good to know what you're talking about when you're talking to a person who may be talking to other lenders. Yep. Okay, cool. Well, I don't see any other questions, so we're going to close it out. I am going to uh, send a follow-up email tomorrow that will come to you, and it will have a link to the recording. It'll have a link to the slide deck and the Getting Started with 203K guide. So if you have any other questions, please contact your Finance of America account executive and um, get registered for our webinar on Monday. And you can register at FAMU events. I'll also send a link out in our follow-up email. And you'll be able to get all the handouts and have that information. And it all begins with your FAM account executive.
And if you don't know who your FAM account executive is, you can go to famwholesale.com and uh, give a call or shoot an email over there and they'll be able to help you out. So William, thank you so much to everyone um, that's attending. Thanks so much and we'll see you on Monday. Okay, thanks everybody. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Ginger. Oh, thank you. Bye. Bye.